Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mr. Freshly Grounded. Whoa, don't don't give people false hope. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm expecting that at least half the people listening to this episode right now is going to be Freshly Grounded listeners, right? So... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 46 of the Mind Heist podcast. It's been a while. Uh, by a while, I mean. It hasn't been as long as it mm, usually is. A couple is. of weeks. Just a couple of weeks, yeah. I think. Yeah. We had a good old two-episode streak of a weekly podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. And uh, I think we've both been in London quite a bit uh, recently, right? Um, yeah. I was in London uh, probably about five, six days. Um, I was... Uh, I went like to meet my partners like so we we do like a three every three months we meet up uh because we know we we don't l live in the same city or whatever so you know we're working together so we need to meet up face to face is pretty important yeah uh, so we do that every three months so this time it was in London um but then what happened is uh we ended up meeting uh I guess like a potential client and then when we we had the meeting and then they're like yeah let's let's go ahead let's do this so then we had to extend the stay because we did like a workshop with them and stuff yeah so ended up being like five days six days something like that um but yeah what about you bro you were in london for family or bro i was in london for everything <laughs> like i might as well move there like i was spent more time over there than i did it over here last week um yeah. but i think i'm gonna have to have a bit of a london ban because it's just costing me a fortune <laughs> going mm. up there all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. I took my son to one of these uh, brothers' gatherings the other day for the first time ever. Oh, uh, okay. I took him out with me and uh, asked the brothers, bro. It was insane. I've never... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was such hard work, bro. Oh, really? Really? Um, okay. What's his face? Um, Jabril Hanzo. Do you know Jabril? I've read his name somewhere. Yeah. Some of the listeners might know him. He, Jabril brought um, his daughters to the to the event as well, so it was just my son and his daughters. Mm. His the, daughters are a bit older than my son. They they are, if I can remember, three and four. Okay. Maybe maybe one year older than that. I can't remember. But um, yeah, my son's obviously two, and mm. he just stuck to them like glue, bro. Pulling their hair, chasing them around, <laughs> just being an absolute nuisance. <laughs> At one point, he really hurt, really hurt his youngest daughter, and I went up to him. Oh, I was like, man. "I'm so sorry." He's <laughs> like, "Bro, don't worry." Um, but kids, man, because because I, I think because I've never had girls, bro. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, never had girls. Um, I'm very, uh, I don't know, soft with them and cautious and stuff. And he's like, "Don't mm -hmm. worry," like they're egging him on, kind of thing. They're setting him up to fail. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that was happens. It, it was an experience, bro. Yeah, I think. Girls often, uh, sorry, boys at that age, you know, boys tend to kind of bully the girls a bit. Yeah. But the girls kind of, I don't know, like you said, like maybe they they deal with it in a kind of sly way. So sometimes they're actually uh, on top, if you like. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like one, the youngest one was running up to, to him, sort of like um, where he was, running up mm. to him, saying, oh, you can't get me, blah, blah, blah running yeah. away when he get, does get hurt then she starts crying so I'm like well you egged him on <laughs> yeah 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 you know what's interesting is you know for example you're in the masjid and your your son or daughter is, is kind of making a noise and annoying people right yeah um obviously I know this is very normal but everyone obviously points at the parent and they get mad at the parent and I, I know that's natural but what I'm gonna try and do at least is uh, with my children I'm going to try and be like uh, they are a separate person to me and so uh, if you want to blame someone in that if you want to be angry at someone like uh, direct it at them so at least they learn that there's consequences to the actions you know yeah. whereas if I kind of take in the full blame then they don't learn yeah. so I don't know it's just a, a thought uh, yeah. it's obviously potentially different in real life but yeah I, I mean uh, quite thankfully like a lot of the brothers I was quite close with anyway. Um, yeah. They may or not have met my son in person, but they've seen, you know, videos and stuff when I've, you know, in group chats and stuff like that. And um, so we did pray on two occasions when he was there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, naturally he, he just ran away from me. Um, mm. But what I did like was that a lot of the brothers weren't shy to sort of 
I don't know, step in if he was doing something, you know, like whilst they were praying, maybe like pull him close to them or, you know, and, and yeah. there's only certain situations like where it, it could be deemed as dangerous. Like there was, there was these like big speakers that were set up in the hall yeah. and, um, you know, he was climbing up and it almost looked like he was going to push one of them over quite a big, mm. you know, bit of kit. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and they pulled him over. When they went into the court, they'd pull him down with him, like force him. Mm. Um, mm. And that's it. Like, otherwise, my Joshua's gone. Everybody's Joshua's gone. If we don't just all sort of take a bit. Yeah. And, but I've never, I haven't really, like, I know my wife has, but I haven't really taken him to the masjid that much. Um, right. At this age. Uh, mm. Maybe just, like, only just at this age you can start that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's difficult. Um, I think what my main concern was, I'll be honest with you, is that at least in this location, he he can easily just run straight out of the building because mm. the door isn't really secure. Okay. Um, and like on one occasion, he just ran out to the car park and I chased him. Not mm. It's not like a public car park, it's like a private sort of place. But mm. yeah, it's just things like that. And, and, and even when that doesn't happen, you're just thinking of everything that could happen. So yeah. for sure, it's really difficult to sort of get, get in check. Mm. Um and I can imagine it's the same thing with with uh, a meshid. Everything's a hazard, bro. You don't realize how many hazards there are until you, you've got a two year old running around. Because suddenly yeah. everything everything can be a hazard, and and you just just getting that sure in mm. place. But um, maybe you know Allah, Allah Alam, But maybe this is part of the wisdom why you know it's mandatory for men to be at the meshid, but not necessarily women a lot of the time. You know? Oh, for sure, man. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, going uh, a woman having to go to the masjid five times with a child like no, nah, yeah. be that's impossible man very difficult so um so how was freshly grounded man you were on freshly grounded i was the episode just came out friday was. it's interesting isn't it bro because mm. um, it's not a secret amongst uh many of the many of those who know me that i've always wanted to go on freshly grounded um yeah. and uh it made me think a lot about setting goals and achieving them because um, mm. I don't know how long I've been in listener maybe how long do you think I've been listening two years maybe yeah perhaps yeah. perhaps two years perhaps a year I don't know but since then I was like oh I'd love to I'd love to be on this and that's you know I won't lie that's part of the inspiration why we even started our podcast at, at least in my perspective mm. Um, mm. you know I've always listened to podcasts I've never ended up taking the initiative and, and I've got to commend Faisal in his his endeavors because he set the set the precedent and when freshly grounded really kicked off then you know mind heist popped off the elm feed podcast came about uh you know plenty plenty of them um but it's good it's good so yeah it was really enjoyable i i obviously went on for a lot longer than a lot of people do <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like two and a half hours but i think part of that was because we did it late night so mm-hmm. i went after work which was quite mm-hmm. a commitment and very sort of um, last minute um, and then we didn't really have anything tying I'd had work but he didn't necessarily have anything tying him down yeah. so we just carried it on going and you know it's 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 the same sort of thing like if the chemistry is good then we'll keep going and that happens with us as well like if we've got a topic the only reason we stop is because our responsibilities sort of jump in the way yes. um, otherwise I think if we both had the time bro I think we could end up doing like four hour episodes if we really put our mind to it yeah um, yeah but yeah it was interesting it was really interesting being in that environment and um having a different sort of discussion i guess uh mm, that's what i realized uh the kind of stuff you were talking about with him is very different to what we talk about here yeah and i, I guess that's just you adapting to different personalities right or, or possibly think? but I, i'll be honest with you yeah. <laughs> i think a lot of that had to do with the time of day it was because right. if you listen to half the first half, it's very, you know, not serious, but you know, we're talking about some important things. Uh, and then as, as the night grew longer, we were, I think, I was just getting a bit more sloppy and a bit more uh, casual with it. Right. Um, and and you've got to remember, and this is another thing which is quite interesting. Like that is the second time I've ever met Matt Faisal. Yeah. Um, so what they're seeing is maybe a relationship blossoming, sort of thing, like a friendship, sort of growing there and then. Uh-huh. Um, as opposed to, and even for you, I mean, like me and you, like our relationship is a certain type of way, but we've barely ever met each other, you know, maybe yeah. twice think, now, twice. Yeah. Th- <laughs> yeah, just two times. Yeah, maybe two or three times. And mm. it, it shows you like the power of 
I think beyond anything, actually, it shows us the the power of what this dean means in terms of brotherhood. How you can meet someone, you know, and you can instantly sort of strike off a, a good friendship and a good general understanding, mm. and not run out of things to talk about as long as you've got the foundation of dean, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's true, man. It's true. Um, bro, I wanted to record this episode specifically because. I kind of had a bit of an epiphany recently, yeah. right? So, you know, yeah, obviously I went to Hajj and stuff, and, uh, you know, we talked about in the, that episode, was it 44, I think, about, like, changing when you come back. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I kind of just, uh, obviously, I ask Allah to help me change and become better and stuff, and I set some goals. But, you know, I, I came back and I got very busy and I had to catch up with things. And I'm not living in my usual house and stuff uh, since I'm in the UK. And, you know, I didn't basically feel like I changed too much, right? But I had the hope that um, I would change uh, when I get back to my normal environment, right? Because mm. then I can, I'm more, more in more control of my routine and stuff like that. But, uh, but now, finally, uh, I kind of just got this epiphany. And I feel like I can see a way now that I will potentially... My, the trajectory of my life has changed yeah. that's what i would say and you might think the the thing i'm going to mention that i've done is trivial but uh i actually believe it will change uh the trajectory of my life inshallah so it kind of started when uh i saw this this kind of a business guy that i followed um i don't actually watch too many of his videos or anything like that but um I do really like some of his longer uh, posts that he writes on Facebook. Right. So I saw one, right? And it was it, it was like a picture of him with his iPhone and it was smashed, okay? okay. So it kind of got my attention. And then I read the post and basically he was explaining that he'd smashed his iPhone and that he's no longer going to have a phone, okay? Um by the way, I haven't smashed my phone. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> but I was just talking to you on WhatsApp. So, um, so he said he smashed his phone. He's like, finally, I've been able to work out a way where I don't need to have a phone in order to like live my life. So uh, he said, you know, this this has kind of been the last barrier for me. He's like, I got rid of my TVs. I've got rid of this, this, that. And now I'm finally getting rid of my phone. So the way he's worked it out is, you know, there's this service called Google Duo. It's okay. like a calling uh, calling app thing. And you, you can have a desktop version of it. And it re uses a real phone number. So I, I, he said he's using that for any phone calls that, I, that he really needs to make. Um, and basically, yeah, he's like, I, I feel like I'm finally free, free of all the rubbish that goes on on my phone, right? Yeah. And one thing really stuck out to me in the post when he just wrote like one, two lines about it, but that was the main thing that stuck out. And he said that um, phones, basically phones train you to always look for the instant gratification and to, you know, like the something called the curiosity loop. Yeah? yeah. Where it's like you open the loop uh, by some, by having a curiosity, right? Spark of curiosity. Yeah. And on our phones, what we're used to doing is closing that loop very quickly. So you wonder what the capital of Uganda is. You go on your phone, you find out straight away. Yeah. And imagine that times a thousand every day. And what basically what it's doing uh, in a meta sense is training you to focus on now and short term and uh, get rewards now. Whereas Islam is all about sacrifice certain things now for the akhara right sacrifice the short term for the long term and so i i fully believe i'm fully convinced that if you if you tr if everything in your life is uh, basically done in a way where it's like uh, okay i've got an urge to do this then go and and uh, follow that urge straight away yeah if if everything in your life is like that even with halal things then you kind of program your brain to not be able to sacrifice for the long term right and and so that kind of made me start asking myself like can i get rid of my phone like how can i like how can i get out of that loop you know um so yeah that's how i am that's how i reached where i am now basically that's uh that was the inspiration at least you know so is that it then you're gonna chuck your phone in the ocean <laughs> No, so 
what I've done is a few things that are concrete, they're good, um, they allow me to keep my phone, but, and I, anyway, I'll explain why, like what I think it will allow me to do. So the first thing I did was I looked at my phone and I know, cause I, I already like look at the time I spend on my phone and I track it and stuff. And I know the apps I spend the most time on, right? So uh, there's WhatsApp, there's Google Chrome, there is uh, email. And then maybe fourth is Slack, which Slack I use for work anyway, so it's not really a problem. Hmm. So straight away, I asked myself, okay, Google Chrome. Out of all the times that I use Google Chrome, how many of those times do I need to use it on my phone? Probably zero, hmm. right? Maybe not zero, but one, two, three times in, in the week, perhaps. Um, so I deleted Chrome, bro. Right. I got rid of Chrome. So now it's like, okay, I want to know the X, Y, Z. Okay, if it's truly important, you'll do it on your laptop. Okay, so that was the first one I got rid of. Um, email, I got rid of again because it's like you can just check that on on lap on the laptop when you actually intend to check it rather than doing it as a reflex. Yeah. Um, I got rid of Slack as well because again, Slack is for work, and work is for when I'm seriously sitting on my laptop to actually work. So I got rid of Slack. And the only one left where I spend significant time is is WhatsApp. And I've not found a solution for that. But then again, you've got to always adapt these things to your real life. And my real life is that a lot of my social life is on WhatsApp. Like, like for example, you're, you're out of everyone like that I know, you're actually one of the closest people to me. Yeah. Like you're probably in the top five or ten people that I know. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but but I would never talk to you if it wasn't for WhatsApp. Like, how would I talk to you? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, so I need WhatsApp. You know, uh, I need to be able to stay in touch with family, like my father-in-law. Uh, some that's the only way I talk to him. Like, I don't really call him. You know. Yeah. So, uh, that's that kind of thing. Um, uh, family. Uh, you know, family group uh, on WhatsApp. So I need it, right? Uh, but what I do is I just limit it to an hour a day. After an hour, it will get grayed out. And to be honest, if I, I believe what I, the benefit I'm going to get out of WhatsApp, I, I'm going to get that benefit within one hour. Like, I'm not going to get more benefit from using it longer than that, right? Mm. So, so basically, now my phone, it's become very easy to use my phone like one hour or less per day because there's nothing there. Like, And also, I find myself not checking it as much, not being like as attached to it. The truth is, though, like, I don't... I, 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 if I expect the benefits, the true benefits of this to be seen like months in a, you know, months later, not, not really now because mm. you have to like, you, what I'm trying to do is actually rewire my brain so that I have more stillness. I have more emptiness in my mind. And when I'm sitting, for example, sitting with my whatever siblings, parents, whatever, I don't reach up for my phone. Like I'm going to train myself to not do that. Um, and, I've helped myself a lot by just removing all of the things I might reach for my phone for, right? Mm. So so that was like the first big, big thing I did. Then I thought, okay, so if I'm pushing the, that kind of activity to my laptop, like, okay, if you really want to do this stuff, do it on your laptop. Now I start thinking, okay, how do I gain control of my time on my laptop so I'm using it in a way that I want to use it? Because, bro, think about it, yeah? Out of all the things you want to do in your life, um how much of like how much of your time is spent on those things versus just other things like just distractions yeah like, true. like what do you think i think i use my phone way way more than the average person yeah um, but probably because i don't have a plan i don't mm. plan things so what happens yeah. is like okay lately i've been doing a lot of sort of graphic design stuff which predominantly i use on my phone i do on my phone yeah. um social media management for the various accounts we've got um you know i do that on my phone um and then generally you know socializing and whatever because the reality is i maybe socialize with one brother in brighton and even mm. him i don't see that often and you can tell that i'm always in london now so i keep in mm. touch with all those people once again yeah. on my phone um yeah. So yeah, but when it comes to like the purposeful reasons I use it, um, 
yeah it's probably a lack of planning which causes me to use it all the time mm. so what would happen mm. is like i'll have five ten minutes i could have like a 10 minute break at work or something and i'll be like oh do you know what i could really you know i could make something quickly right now and post it let me do yeah. that and I'll, and I'll spend you know all that time doing it and the problem is with me once i start something like mm. that something creative and a creative process i can't mm. stop so like mm. it could be even like i could be at home and i'll start it and like um, you know my wife might ask me to do something or whatever but I'll be so fixated and not wanting to lose the flow that I've got that I can't yeah. put it away I have to finish what I'm doing first mm. um, but w- once again it goes I'm still in that you know we, we spoke about what was that famous episode we did about the 9 to 5 um, yeah probably 41 something like yeah, that yeah that was a really you know and, 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 I, and alhamdulillah you know what I'm happy to say calling back to that episode alhamdulillah mm. I'm happy to say that my mindset is still the same um, mm. When after recording that, I was quite wary that I would get, you know, the motivation would decrease and the lull would yes. sort of kick in, and I'd get back into. It. But no, um, because of that, I'm still sort of chasing, chasing the, the white rabbit in a sense that mm. I'm not a hundred percent sure all the time what direction I want to go in. Yes, yes, um, yes. So what I end up doing is using my phone a lot to sort of, mm-hmm. oh, maybe I should do this. Oh, this will inspire me to do this. Oh, I need some creative sort of, mm. you know, input, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah. I think, inshallah, once I'm settled in one thing or two things and I know what those things are, mm. um, then I can manage how I use my phone. And I think a lot of people yeah. I've spoken to, at least a lot of the brothers I've networked with and stuff, especially those who sort of own their own businesses and stuff, they have it, which I don't have yet, not at all, but they have it where they wake up in the morning and they've got a set plan in their head of what they want to achieve that day. Yeah. You know? So let's, it's, let's say it is a social media thing or something on, on that needs your phone like requires mm-hmm. your phone to do it then you could say okay today i want to do x y z these are the three goals i want to do on my phone for example um, yeah. if it is a creative process or if you're posting something or if you're you know producing something you mm-hmm. achieve those three and then you don't have to worry about um what ifs because you would have achieved those three Whilst yes yes w- when i'm loosely following not loose following a plan i see mm-hmm. every sort of opportunity as a time to push this imaginary goal further and i call it an imaginary goal because i'm still at a stage where i'm not a hundred percent sure what i'm doing mm, yeah <laughs> you know? what, what the goal is exactly yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't say I, I feel like i've definitely this is the thing that I, i'm not sure if i've definitely toned down my waste of time on there or yeah. if i'm disguising time wasting as productivity do you know what I mean? Okay. So yeah, yeah, I get like I could mean. say to like uh, you know it could happen. Like uh, my wife would say, "Oh, you've been on your phone a lot," and I, I could say, "No, no, I'm doing something. Like this is important." Yeah. But then mm. when I do reflect on it, I'm like, "Well, is it important? Do I see like a is there a plan to this? Have I planned this out? Mm-hmm. Am I planning to do X, Y, Z so that the result I'm trying to achieve is X, Y, Z or not? You know? Yeah, yeah. So like to going towards uh, your goal there might be 10 different things you could do to get towards the goal yeah. are you selecting the best out of the, those 10 things the best kind of thing exactly Is, exactly yeah, so like yeah. for example recently if anyone's been following me and this you could see this definitely from my instagram account because mm. i feel like every other week my instagram account is something different you know because right, i'm still okay. not 100 percent sure what my niche is or what direction to head in yes um yes i've discussed this with my wife that i'm I'm possibly a jack of all trades and master of none, um, mm. but I, I have. Which is, by the way, normal for someone like your age, I think. Yeah, but for myself, like I'm not bigging myself up when I say that I feel like I have the potential to be a master of any of the, any of the things I do if I dedicate yes. the time to it. Yes, you know, I've the got... only thing stopping you is uh, focus, basically. Exactly, but and what ends up happening is like, yeah, it's like okay, I'll give you an example. Like you know, I've been doing a lot of digital sort of visual design, graphic design sort of stuff. And then I thought, okay, that's what I want to do. That's mm. what I'm, you know, and I might be pursuing that, still pursuing that. But then something else will happen. Like, for example, the Freshly Grounded podcast, I'm like, oh, do you know what? This really makes me think about how Mind Heist could be or what more stuff I could do, you know, content creation wise, like on the mic yeah. or in video or whatever. Um, and, you know, because of that, I'm doing, uh, you know, inshallah, I'll be doing a, a project with Faisal himself at some point. Uh, which we started, you know, it's behind the scenes sort mm. of stuff. But, to, but this is it. So like, oh, now I'm thinking about that. And does that mean I should make my Instagram more of a personal thing again? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm like mm. dancing around. But yes. but to go back to the core message, um, I think, what are you using it for? Like I'd argue, compared to the average person, I'd say, okay, I feel like I have a purpose, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm not using social media 
or um, you know watching funny videos or whatever just for entertainment mm-hmm. like I see it as you know partly benefit and partly business you know and probably more mm-hmm. so business in the mm-hmm. sense that yeah I do showcase what I'm up to or what I'm creating what I'm working on that's part of my exposure more exposure means better easier to sort of advertise business or advertise mm. sort of things that we're working on mm. Um, mm. you yourself you just, though you're not really um, yeah. you're not really onto social media anymore are you yeah but the, where, what I've mentioned in this episode is actually an extension of what I decided years ago yeah um, that's why I deleted my Twitter account that's why I I have an Instagram account but I haven't used it for probably four or five years yeah um, that's why on my new phone, I never once installed Snapchat because I, I just don't use it. Hmm. Um, and my Facebook, I so Facebook's the only social media I use. And a lot of it, to be honest, is business use. But n- I'm not going to lie. It's also like just general general stuff, yeah. you know, stuff that I'm interested in. But I, I have a limit on that. So after I've used Facebook for 25 minutes uh, in any given day, it will block me out and it won't let me in. Hmm. So I just... You know, I was listening to this book, um, Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, and he's got kind of a strategy in there where you might want to uh, follow to like take control of how you use your phone or your laptop or whatever so that you're in control and not them. And what he said, a very good point. He said that these social media platforms, they encourage you to join the platform uh, offering you all these benefits. And that's what makes us join. Right. Because there are benefits. But what happens is you end up spending 20% of your time on the platform for that benefit and then 80% for other things that they have designed and crafted and engineered to guide you towards, you know. So it's like after a year of being on X whatever platform, if you look at your use, you realize, oh, I joined for this, but most of the time I'm doing that, Mm. you know. So by, by limiting my use of Facebook, like it'll literally kick me out of it. Um, it makes me be conscious of, okay, I've only got 25 minutes on Facebook. Am I using it, you know, on the best things? Um, but again, but I don't want to sound like the kind of person who's saying like it's pure, purely bad, but I just ask myself, am I in control of my use or is, is, you know, is it in control of me? Is, Mm -hmm. is my laptop, is Facebook, is my phone in control of how I'm using my time? Mm -hmm. And if, for example, uh, I want to go to the gym. Like I want to be healthy. I want to gain some muscle, gain some weight, and uh, you know, what do I need to do to achieve that? I probably need to go gym uh, three times a week, maybe for an hour. Let's say I need yep. to do that. Right? Yeah. Um, if uh, if because of Facebook, I I don't do that, then I must question: Should I have Facebook? You know. Yeah. And when you extrapolate that over five and ten years, you realize. I'm going to be 40 and I would have, you know, never achieved that goal of, you know, gaining muscle and being healthy and fit purely because of a Facebook account. So when I think of it that way, I'm like, look, there's a no brainer now. Let me delete this thing. Let me get rid of it. You know, so I, I'm just very aware of the um, behavior engineering that goes on behind the scenes at these companies. Um, And I always, I always say to my wife, like, uh, for example, Instagram, you know, and, and uh, another friend of mine told me the same thing. They're like, look, I, I'm not that bad that I, it's out of control. Like, I'm going to control my use. Yeah. yeah. But I'm like, don't be so naive because uh, Facebook, which owns Instagram, they have uh, engineers or, or they probably have behavioral scientists. They have um, psychologists, uh, all of these people working on how to get you to engage more with their product yeah yeah and they they get they hire the best people in the world that they can find and they probably they pay a lot of them hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to get the absolute best people and they might have a team of 20 working on making the product more engaging so how can you one um person who's uneducated in this field beat a a team of 20 who are some of the best in the world at it it's just it's hopeful thinking wishful thinking really isn't it definitely i mean it's you know we are we're becoming slaves to algorithms anyway because you know it's the same with youtube for example you put on a youtube video and then you know not just the combination of the recommended video afterwards but the autoplay mm. functionality the fact that yeah. thumbnails have been adapted and and um 
mm, sort of edited, optimized, yeah, to, yeah, optimized basically to to be as eye catching as possible. Yeah. Titles, obviously, clickbait titles, whatever you want to call it, mm, and mm. the fact that the topic, the video topic, is is linked to somewhat to whatever your you sort of watched before, and it mm. and it's an algorithm that switches almost instantly. So. My son uses the same YouTube account as mine, right? Mm -hmm. The moment I watch something adult, like, you know, a lecture or whatever, then all of the recommendations are instantly tuned to me. The moment he puts on something for himself, everything switches Mm. again to him. One would argue that, you know, maybe it nicks or whatever, but no, it's so optimized now that as soon Mm. as you you make that switch to whatever genre it is, Mm. you're automatically going to get those recommended things into your feed. I I would guess that... They've come to the conclusion, or probably through research, that you're most likely to watch a video related to a more recent video that you've watched. Yep. Right? So if you're interested in something in the last day, you're more likely to want to watch more of it than something you watched three months ago. Yeah. So because of that, that they've decided to make it adapt that way. Yeah. So they know what they're doing, bro, in the end. And I love YouTube, man. I, I spend a lot of time on YouTube. I find... Bro, my subscriptions feed or whatever it's called is so sick, bro. Full of videos every day that I really enjoy. Um, most of them I benefit a lot from, but some, yeah. bro, I just purely enjoy. Yeah. Um, and and so I really enjoy that. But I don't. I just all I don't want it to happen is that I watch YouTube instead of X Y Z goal, and right. in ten years I've done nothing. That's all it yeah, is in the end. Definitely. Um, that's all it is purely. And, and another thing, like, what what do you think about your ability to focus? Because, you know, when I went to uni to do masters, um, there was, um, uh, I had a seminar every week, and I had to read like four or five journal articles, and then we would discuss what was in them, right, in the seminar. Yeah. And there's only like four or five of us in the seminar, so you kind of got to speak, uh, you know, you can't not contribute, and you get a mark for your contribution. So... I used to, this is when I really came up against a brick wall when it came to being able to focus and not get distracted. Um, I used to spend sometimes uh, probably five, six, seven, eight hours doing this. No, bro, more than that. No, I would have to be more than 10 hours, like reading these, trying to understand it and then summarizing it in notes um, to show that I've understood it and stuff like that. Yeah. I would really, really struggle. And it kind of got to a level where it was ruining my life, you know, not to dramatize, but like to a level, you know. And meanwhile, the p- other people in the seminar, I talked to them afterwards and they're like, yeah, I kind of do it in about a couple of hours, three hours maybe. And I'm just like, whoa, like I'm at this big disadvantage here. Yeah. And part of me now, when I think back, it's maybe because I was the youngest person on that whole course, okay? Mm. So these people didn't grow up with the internet like I did. And so maybe they don't. their brains haven't been wired to do this whole like multitasking, switching between things, instant gratification thing. So I feel like I'm at a bit of a disadvantage compared to them. And so like, okay, my brain's kind of like that. It's probably better than, than people younger than me, but... I just don't. I just don't want to live with that. I want to try at least my best to kind of improve my ability to focus on one thing um, for you know at least an hour at a time or something like that. Mm. Um, what about you? Do you think you kind of suffer from that, or you I haven't think noticed? I definitely used to if it wasn't something my heart was in. Um, mm. If it was something I had to do, but you know, not necessarily want to do, then yeah, my my concentration would really sort of wane. But if it's something like I mentioned earlier, if it's something that I want to do that I believe in, um, yeah. you know, doing it necessarily for my for myself, mm. then nothing gets in my way in that sense. And mm. something sometimes even dangerously so. Like I don't want to do anything else but to get this done, mm. uh, unless yeah. unless it's something creative where I'm really sort of struggling to to put. Like it gets to a point where your creativity sort of dries up and you just have to give it a break um, yeah. to come back to it later. Mm. Um, but by that time I've already made like you know a few projects already but yeah yeah, so you know I get it now like you know revising for training at work or back at uni it was like exams and and coursework and essays and stuff certain essays though I remember back at uni like because the topic area was so interesting like my dissertation for example because I got to choose what that was and I was passionate about the subject I was like, yeah, this is mm. really. I'm really enjoying writing this because I feel mm. strongly about it, as opposed to doing something that you know maybe your boss tells you to do or 
and, and a lot of it is like if you can immediately see the uh, the rewards like on the horizon of what, if I do this and I'm going to get this done or I'm going to get this in yes. return then yeah. it's obviously a motivating factor but if yeah. the rewards are a bit sort of shaky ground you don't really know what the result of it is going to be mm. then it's a bit less motivation mm. I suppose yeah yeah you know I told you before um, that I wanted to write a book right yeah so I kind of got started on it and I really, really want to write this book. I want to. I want to know. I want to have a good level of understanding of the topic, and I want to be able to write that in a book. And I want to benefit the world with it. Okay. Now, I love that idea, but when you sit down and you research, um, you don't love that idea, or at least I didn't. Um, and so, the the fact of the matter is no matter how engaged you are in the overall goal, there will always be sub parts of that goal that you kind of don't like, or they're not so engaging and stimulating for you. And you just can't achieve unless you are able to go through those difficult things. Yeah. It's, it, it's like, it's like business, bro. Like people, some people like myself, you know, I love business. I love building business, uh, businesses. I love marketing. I love sales. I love product, but I might not like accounting. And you just cannot be good at business if you don't do accounting. And so I love business and therefore I must do accounting, right? Even though I don't love it. So I want to be able to do things I'm not so engaged with regardless because that's what's required to, to reach my goals, you know? So I just want to have that ability to focus, you know? Uh, even if I'm, I'm not loving it, I'm not engaged. Um, so I just feel like I need to... I need to. It's a skill, basically. It's mm. a skill. Uh, your brain is is plastic. It, it can be molded. So I want to try and re recapture some of the initial natural ability that the brain has to focus on things. Um, mm. So so a lot yeah. Of, a lot of this. Oh, you, yeah. I was going to say a lot of this obviously requires planning. It requires you know being purposeful yeah. with your time. Um, mm. But what I've discovered recently is that all of that can sort of go out of the window if you are going through things anyway like you've got stuff going on at home or like distractions are always going to distractions of what's more important in life might always sort of crawl their way into your yeah. mind um, yeah, no doubt and it, you know it can get frustrating you want to be there to fix things you want to be there to sort things out and you know yeah. that you know the, the, the lifestyle that you're living is limiting you from doing that um, yeah going back to the sort of nine to five thing I was talking about, like I've had days, you know, these, these few weeks where I wake up, uh, knowing of like today, for example, knowing I've got to go to work and just being so down about it because yeah. I feel like it's taken me away from, you know, that, which I actually really want to do or, and mm. you know, alhamdulillah, my wife's really supportive in the sense that she remind me like, you know, I, I remind myself as well, like these, these, these struggles that we go through are there as motivators. Cause if we didn't have these and I'd just be lazy, and I wouldn't get things done, you know. It's mm. the discomfort that you feel that propels you into doing something about it. Mm -hmm. um, if I was quite cushy in what my lifestyle is, then I probably wouldn't have the motivation to get things changed or 100%. change the situation. You know, the worst kind of job is a job that you're comfortable in, mm. right? If you, uh, assuming you want to like get into business, yeah, because you'll just stay there. Yeah. But you, you need to kind of either love your job or hate it in order to be eventually be yeah, happy yeah. if you're just kind of comfortable it means you won't hate it enough to do something about getting out isn't it yeah that's the thing like you know I'm not gonna, i don't want to turn this into like a nine to five podcast again even though i could i could talk about that forever mm. but it's not always like oh the job is awful because um, mm. you can see how you would enjoy it you can see how others would enjoy it but it's it it's often what it takes you away from like the more yes things. yeah like um, your potential and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uncon like, you know, what I realize, bro, you know, like in, in our business, we work with a lot of Muslims who, mo we, what we found talking to a lot of Muslims is most Muslims want to do something legacy focused, akhira focused, contribution yeah. focused. Like, it's crazy, bro. Alhamdulillah is something that we have in our deen where everybody wants to do something good for the ummah, for the world. Um, and you just find that everywhere. So uh, obviously they would they would then if their bulk of their time's going to their job, they would see that as kind of a barrier and it's like frustrating. Yeah. But at least you know if you could provide for your family, you know it's, it's a good portion of things done. But mm. uh, 
you know, just got to be patient, I guess, and uh, work through the method and stuff. But, bro, you know, you said about how, and you said this on the Freshly Grounded episode as well, how um, a lot of these uh, tips to kind of optimize your, yourself and your time, they 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 don't seem to apply when life's a bit a bit wild right yeah. um and i agree with you bro and that's why you need like you need flexible things in place yeah um and that's why i like some of the things that i've done so i just kind of ran through i ran through the things i've done on my phone and the, the, what i love about those is they have a very long um half life if you like so if i delete google chrome off my phone it doesn't require any more effort for me to stop using it yep it's a one-time action which which lives on forever um and so a lot of the things that i've done are, are like that so i talked about my phone what i've done but then on my laptop i got this um chrome extension which it removes comments and related videos from youtube so like i said i love youtube but I also realized that the related videos gets me going down rabbit hole. Yeah. So I've just got that Chrome extension. It's a one-time action that pays off forever. Mm. Yeah. Um, also, I've got this uh, software called Freedom. And it was so cheap. It was $30 for the year. And what it does is it I can set it up the way I like. Again, it's a one-time action. So I set it up to block certain websites that I just never want to be visiting because... Yeah. They, they, you know, I personally just don't feel um, uh, benefit in them, although I might find myself on them. So I just, I said, block those always. Yeah? yeah. So if I go to those, it will say, it will have a big logo and it will say, uh, you're free. Like this website is blocked. You're free to go and do your stuff. Yeah. You know? So I like that message. Um, and now I've, I've, I've gone, since this epiphany, I've gone a bit more hardcore. So before I used to block YouTube uh, until 12 p.m., like midday. But then I thought, okay, after 12 p.m., do I not have work hours? Do I not have stuff I'm, I'm supposed to do? Yes, I do. So why am I allowing myself to go on YouTube then? So now what I've done is I've allowed YouTube between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Yeah. yeah. So I've again, this is one time action, which will live on forever. Um, another thing I did was there's a, a Chrome extension called uh, limit and it's made by the freedom thing, but this one's free. And it, this one uh, is the whole thing that blocks Facebook after using it for a certain amount of time or whatever website you want. Um, so you're saying, look, I'm going to use these things cause I like them. I enjoy them. I want them in my life. There's benefit in them, but just not more than X amount of time per day. Yeah. Um, and that's, these are kind of the things I mentioned. These are like the bulk of what I've done. And like I said, they're actually, I think all of them are one-time action. They don't require effort afterwards. Um, so uh, that's, that's I think, really powerful. I'm hoping that one day, like, all of these sort mm. of... Because, you know, desktop sort of use has really advanced when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, mm. But, you know, smartphones are still sort of lagging behind. Yes, um, yes. And that's... Well, although, you know, like Freedom, it has a mobile app. Okay. Um, and But the thing is... I, do, I found that there's usually ways around it, yeah. around the blocking, yeah? Uh, and so it, it wasn't as effective on my phone. But uh, even on laptop, to be honest, bro, there are ways around it. But when you get that thing coming up saying it's blocked, now you're free to go do your thing, mm. that is now it kind of comes down to your motivation. Yeah. So for me, when I, when I get that screen, I'm like, oh, yeah, like silly me. Like I kind of get um, woken out of my hypnosis. And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, silly me. I'll, I'll go back and do the thing I actually want to be doing. Um, but the, I know that and the, there have been times in my life where I, I didn't have that motivation. So I just unblock it and I'd be like, yeah, let me just I just want to follow my urge right now. Yeah. Um, so you do need a level of motivation to actually want want the result of blocking yourself out of these things. Like if you really want to go to the gym, you really want it. Then when you get that block screen, you will be like, yes, actually, you know, bye bye. I'm going to the gym kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's it's like an accountability sort of reminder, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Uh, because exactly. the old you, the old you is telling the now you to sort itself out. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Bro, so as 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 sad it is, it is, we're running out of time because I have to sort of wrap things up. I know it's mm -hmm. only been 45 minutes, but mm. I think we've spoken quite well about sort of aspects of time management. If mm -hmm. you could advise uh, our listeners regarding mm. how 
best to sort of minimise their usage on their fines, what would you do? What would you say? Hmm. I mean, I don't want to repeat what I've already said because what's a good place to start then? The good good place to start is to to know your usage. Mm-hmm. So on whether you have an, an Android phone or an iPhone, uh, there is in the settings you can see how long you're using your phone, and then you just need to say, okay, does this usage correlate with my goals in life? That's for me, bro. That's like the the tiny, you know, like how uh, what's it called, James Clear, Atomic Habits, yeah, tiny, definitely. like tiny habit. Definitely. So a tiny action you can do is look at your phone usage. And just ask yourself, okay, based on what I want to achieve in my life, is, is this correlating or is this in conflict with that? Yeah. That's the, the tiny little thing that I think uh, sparks a, a bit, of, like, I, like I started this episode with, an epiphany that, oh my God, like I'm not going to get where I want to get if I keep this up. Yeah, definitely. I think for so. myself, it's um, it's giving purpose to certain actions. So... Mm-hmm. realizing that it's two things really so realizing when i pick my phone up is it because there is something i need to do or is it because mm. i'm looking for something to do um, mm. and the second thing is it's something i'd like to try actually is have an allocated time for notifications so okay. maybe every morning you know for about 10 minutes mm. where well, it depends mm. maybe 10 minutes check all the notifications from the day before mm. um so it could be like Instagram comments, it could be emails, uh, pings, you know, any, it could be anything um, because that's mm-hmm. what ends up happening. Like I've realized <laughs> I found myself so going on Instagram, like refreshing the page just to see what notifications I've had. Not because I'm mm. actually going to benefit or, or miss out on anything, but just out of curiosity. Whilst actually yeah. I can do all of that in one go if I just exactly. do it for 10 minutes in the beginning yeah. of the day. It's, it's because you're trying to close the loop in instantly. Yeah. So if if there's one notification, you want to read that now. You don't want to wait till there's ten and read them all together. Exactly. Uh, that that's what the brain has been trained to exactly. do. But batching, obviously, anyone who's into I don't know process design or whatever, they'll always say batching is more efficient than doing it in yeah. real time. I think so. one more thing is like with with the, with regards to messages. I think what I will do from now on is. If I um, if I get a message, then you can sort of see a preview of the message if you just raise your phone anyway. Uh-huh, if I can yeah. tell by the message that it's something you know reasonably important, then I'll reply. Mm. If I can tell that yes. it isn't, then I'll just reply tomorrow during that 10-minute mm. thing. Do you know mm. what I mean? Um, yes, because yeah, obviously exactly. there's a lot of projects I'm working with. Like, for example, me and you, we do the podcast. If you were to message me, oh, can you record tomorrow? And I just say, I'll reply to him tomorrow. That's a different yeah, story. Yeah. Um, yeah exactly you got to be flexible with these things like i'm never going to be the guy being super you know like unrealistically rigid in it like you've got to be flexible and mm-hmm. it, it all comes down to your goals like if you don't want to like go gender and you don't want to achieve anything then f- f- close the podcast mm-hmm. don't listen to it mm-hmm. but i'm assuming you know people want to do stuff mm-hmm. i've noticed another thing is you know again with messages is when i get a message then I will reply with a message, and that conversation can go on all day. Yes, but I've realised, yes. like I did it yesterday. I think I got a message. Someone asked me how I was, so I called them, mm. which I never usually yeah. do. I never called them just mm. to sort of reply. I called them. It ended up being a ten-minute conversation, whilst it would have ended mm. up being like an all-day text back and forth if I'd done it that right. way. Right. So okay, that yeah. sort of put yeah. nipped it in the bud, kind of thing. Like, oh yeah, how are you? Mm. Blah, blah blah. This happened. Mm. This happened. Okay. All right. Speak yeah. to you soon. And that was it. Yeah yeah sorted it out in that time yeah uh, you know you that reminds me you know this brother i was uh, on hajj with I, I got his number and everything and like a few days after we got back from hajj he messaged me and i got back to him probably 12 hours later and but in the meantime he started calling me he started messaging me oh, saying, no. saying bro is everything okay like how come you didn't reply yeah. <laughs> i'm like whoa like people have different standards for the response time right Definitely. um so easily bro i will go one two three days without replying and i, I kind of do that purposely like my wife knows this because i always tell her like i've got a new guy that i'm talking to on whatsapp someone i just got to know whatever I've got to train him that I don't I don't reply instantly unless 
you know so once you, once people understand what to get you know to get used to your response time then they won't feel insulted or anything yeah, yeah, but yeah. i just found that funny that some people consider that if you don't reply in like in like half an hour an hour like there might must be something wrong like it's kind of crazy kind of crazy and uh, bro you know just before we wrap it up you know one the one major thing which again kind of blew my mind when i was sitting and thinking about this is that since i was 18 uh, when i was 18 was when i got a, a laptop and i went to uni and i went to live on my own yeah right since the age of 18 i have developed a habit of being on my laptop as my default state okay so not sure of what to do just go to a laptop and then even if i'm on sit, already sitting on my laptop oh don't know what to do just like open youtube yeah and that's just insane that my default state is to go to a laptop obviously it's become less since i got married yeah but but still like i i don't want that i want i want to make a decision you know in the end there's deeper messages in some hadith and for example you know the hadith in the uh in you know actions are based on the on on the intention this doesn't mean only that if you get have a good intention you get rewarded um yeah. or or what it means is that you should be intentional with what you do you shouldn't be on autopilot yeah and so i want to bro i'm on my laptop like i've got so many useful things on my laptop but i just don't want it to be that when in doubt go on laptop mm. you know what i mean so that that was a big one for me may allah put barakah in our time I mean, your Rabb, and allow us to reach all of our goals exactly. bit by bit, hack away at them, Amen. and don't let, in the end, it's shaitan, don't let shaitan keep us away from spending time on the things that deep, deep down we really find useful and, and important in our yeah. life. Be the person that your past self will thank later on. Yes, yes. Okay, bro, so if you've got any uh, questions, contributions, you can email us at mindheistpodcast at gmail.com or yeah. you can send us a curious cat anonymous thingamajig which I always struggle getting but here it is I think it's curious curiouscat.me yeah. forward slash mindheistpod we're also available on the Twitters and the Instagrams, which I don't mm. update that much because I'm trying to save time in my personal life. Um, hey. <laughs> but I do update when there's a new episode or when we're recording a new episode. Um, as far as me, you can follow me on Aki Tweet on Instagram and Twitter. And mm. I mean, you cannot follow him anywhere, but yeah. best you can believe, find me on YouTube. If, if you need to get in touch with I mean, you've got access to Mind Heist Instagram, haven't you? uh instagram uh only when i'm with my wife my wife's with her parents right now so uh, i don't <laughs> well if you want to get in touch with me let me know yeah. and i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of funny bro no but uh actually there is a one way uh so youtube if you search Sierra Masters on YouTube, actually, I'm uploading the uh, the podcast there now as well. So every episode will be up there if people just want to listen on YouTube. Brilliant. Um, and you could just uh, drop a comment, I guess, on a video. And I do check those uh, once a week. I batch, just like we talk about. Awesome. Um, so I, I, I reply to every single comment uh, once a week. Um, and bro, you know, I realized just a couple hours ago, I was thinking about recording with you. And I realized, do I own mindheistpodcast.com? I'm like, no. And then I'm like, does Akhi Tweet own it? And I was like, what the hell? And then I went and bought it. So, <laughs> alhamdulillah, we own it. Okay, we own it. That reminds me, I've got a domain I need to buy. I completely forgot. I need to do that later. Um, <laughs> I felt like I was going to say one more thing. Oh, yes. Just last thing. To those listeners, I want to get some feedback, right? I want to get okay. some really okay. proper feedback. It feels, it feels like it's been a while since we've really had some decent feedback from you guys. And I've learned, like, just by doing the Freshly Grounded podcast, I've learned that there's a lot of people that already knew me, that were listening to him, that already listened to Freshly Grounded, that already knew about Mind Heist, which I was actually mm. quite surprised with. Um, even in the comments of that video, you can see people saying, oh, actually, he does a podcast called Mind Heist. It's really good, blah, blah, blah. Um, Sick. Which is really interesting because, you know, I thought like we were in a bubble. I didn't really know that we crossed over. But it sounds like there's a lot of people um, that do listen. And, yeah, I know the stats suggest that a lot of people listen to Mind Heist. But we don't really get as many um, audience interaction. We don't get the opportunity to really get a lot of audience interaction. So what I'd really like, personally, is if you 
either send a uh, message through the Mind Heist Instagram or email us at mindheistpodcast at gmail.com just about Mind Heist in general. How you know what you enjoy about it, what you think we could improve on, uh, mm. what was you know, what has been the most beneficial topic and maybe, you know, something interesting like oh I shared this episode with such and such and do you know what I mean? Anything interesting yeah. that little stories, story. anecdotes. Yeah, and it'd be really nice to go through that during uh, future episodes because one of my main goals with Mind Heist, which we haven't really achieved yet, is to get really deep with other sort of listeners and get them involved a lot. I'd love to do like case study emails. So if someone sends an email, we'll really delve in deep. We've had we've had mm. quite good ones in the past, but like delving deep with people's sort of situations yeah. and, and, and topics. Those have been good good episodes, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, that's my final piece, um, mm-hmm. and I can hear my son smacking the door outside. So mm-hmm. I think it's time up for me. And of course, we'll we'll keep it anonymous, uh, just you know, to to give people that um, what's the word? Security. It's risk free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's risk free, inshallah. Uh, yeah bro so it's been a pleasure inshallah uh, probably yeah in Saturday inshallah we'll record again inshallah inshallah and uh, yeah it's been a pleasure um, yeah subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha la anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah alaikum assalam